Hello, wonderful. This is Sarah. And if it sounds like my voice is a little gruff this morning, it is because this is very first thing I'm doing. This is the first word I've spoken today because I woke up and wanted to talk to you about feeling my feelings and the experience I had feeling my feelings, uh, which is pretty terrible, actually. So, and I think it's a really confusing subject. Um, and wanted to share my experience. So first off, um, if you have experienced any type of trauma or um, your body was injured, whether in like sexual abuse or physical abuse, um, you can kind of disconnect from your body or childhood abuse, you can disconnect from your body. Um, And so I am talking to you about my experience of feeling my feelings, but this is not meant to be a, hey, you should try this today type thing, because um, it can be a very tricky experience um, that would be best used and experienced with someone who knew what they were talking about. And so I want to be very, uh, not that I don't know what I'm talking about, but I don't know your story. I know my story and I know my client's story and I know that type of thing. But if you're just listening to this and I don't know your story. And so I want to be very careful and specific to say this isn't like advice because I don't want to be disrespectful to you in your healing journey um, because mine was very painful. My experience of feeling my feelings was um, violent is the word I'm going to use to describe it, like emotionally violent. Um, trying to do this process. And so I just want to send love and care to you. And I don't know your experience. Um, And I just want, you know, this is kind of like the disclaimer, like this is not medical advice. Okay. So I I just want to be really respectful to you and your journey. Um, So today's podcast is not a how-to necessarily. It is a, this is what I did. And this is what I experienced. Um, So take it take what feels good to you, leave what doesn't feel good to you. Um, If you've experienced trauma, you need to be working with someone who knows what they are talking about, right? Um, And and know your story. So I tend to have a flight trauma response. For years, I had a fawn trauma response and a freeze trauma response. And uh, then getting out of that, uh, got into a flight trauma response. Um, And so it was just like, go, 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 busy, busy. Let me just, you know, stay busy. I don't have to think about it. I'm also an Enneagram seven. Okay. So if you're familiar with the Enneagram, um, Enneagram sevens, like will basically do anything to avoid hard things um, and hard conversations, which is kind of funny that I've been working with toxic relationships for so long. Um, But, you know, I, it was hard, like, you know, feeling your feelings and pain and suffering, you know, not my favorite topics, right? And, uh, but it kind of got to a place in my own healing journey that I really thought it was time, okay? And like, my body felt like it was time, my body felt uh, like it was just safe for me to do now. I'll say it that way. It was safe for me to do now. My outside environment was safe enough for me to handle some things within my inside environment that I could not have done when my outside environment still felt so unsafe. Okay. So my husband was gone. I had the house to myself and I was just going to like feel my feelings this week. I wasn't going to run from anything. I wasn't going to busy myself out of anything. I wasn't going to use the kids as a distraction. I wasn't going to use friendship as a distraction or work as a distraction. So no more distractions. I was just going to like feel my feelings. And when we try to feel our feelings, okay? So biologically, we are not made to move toward pain, right? So most of us are not like, man, I should probably like burn my hand on the stove today. Like that would be a good experience. Like we, we, we're like, whoa, I don't want to burn my hand because that will be painful. And so just like we don't want to have physical difficult experiences, 
We don't want to have emotional difficult experiences. And here's what I want you to know is that feeling your feelings means being within your body and feeling the physical sensations that your body creates when it has a feeling. Okay. So feeling that tightness in your chest, feeling that tightness in your jaw, feeling that heaviness in your stomach, feeling that um, pain like in your mouth. Like when I felt anger, it was like almost at the tip of my tongue, like, like my teeth, like it felt like there was like a triangle almost in my teeth. And it was like, I, I, I could feel everything right at the front of my mouth. Um, so I mean, definitely give it a Google, um, you know, on how to feel your feelings and, and recognize that what that means is not talking about your feelings or yeah, I'm sad or I feel depressed or I feel angry. Like that is not what it is. It is actually experiencing being inside your body enough that you feel the physical sensations that an emotion causes. Okay. And just like we don't, you know, our brain is like, whoa, I'm not going to touch a hot oven because I'll burn my hand. Our brain is really good at like going into the stories in our head or, you know, figuring out ways to busy ourselves or, you know, I won't think about that now. You know, I'm busy with the kids or whatever. Um, our brains are, we are built to avoid pain. We do not put our hand on the stove for a reason. Okay. We do not feel our feelings for a reason because it was very, very painful. Okay. And that's why I said like emotionally violent. Um, so I had been practicing like being in my body more. Okay. So um, I love being in my head. It feels safe in my head. Um, I, I, I worked through so much to not have like a toxic voice in my head and I'm nice to myself in my head. And, you know, I'm really good at um, uh, thinking in ways that are positive or useful to me, even if they're not positive, isn't it like a happy, everything's fine sense, but they're positive to me. My head feels like a good place to be. Okay. My body did not feel like a good place to be. And very, very, very few people their body does feel like a good place to be. Okay. So the first thing I did was like feeling like being in my body. Okay. So like pick a body part. Well, I'm not telling you what to do. Remember, <laughs> I picked a body part. I'm so used to uh, that type of advice. So I picked a body part. Um, and I think when you hear me, I will, I don't want you to try this. <laughs> like uh, it, it was, it was really bad. So um like picked a body part like my arm or like my legs or my feet and just tried to sense being in my body, like sense, like have the sense of being present in my feet or have the sense of being present in my arm or have the sense of being present in my chest or have the sense of being, I started with my hands um, because my hands felt, I, I'm a piano player. Um, my hands have served me well. Uh, so that felt like kind of one of the safest places to be inside my hands. Um, so I started there and just like the sense of being inside my hands, not just inside my head. Okay. So I've been practicing that already kind of leading up to this experience. And then when it was like feeling my feelings, I like listen to a couple of sad songs. I'm a music nerd. So I went with like Mozart, um, his death requiem actually. And this wasn't like a, like a, you know, I hate to say that like a suicidal experience. It wasn't like that at all, but it was just like, okay, what's a sad song? Um, they call it his death requiem because he died uh, writing it. It wasn't about death. Well, it was actually, but anyway. Okay. So that was like a sad song that I connected with. Um, and then I journaled. Okay, about sadness. And then I tried to allow 
those feelings to be felt in my body, like to be present in my body and actually experience and feel the physical sensations, the tightness in my chest, the tightness in my neck, the inflamed uh, pain in my jaws. Um, that, that was the first experience. There's other, but I'll, I'll start there. Um, and it was really terrible. And um, I actually like ran to the restroom. It was like dry heaving or maybe I did throw up. I don't remember. Um, it was very intense. And that's why I say this is like, I'm telling you what my experience was. I'm, this is not a how-to uh, because uh, you, I want you, I don't know your experience again. And I, trauma is a serious thing. And um, so it just felt like violent. It felt like the pain was so intense. Um, and this is why, right, that I, I waited until my outside environment felt safe because this was all like in my body feeling stuff. It was like my body had to catch up with where my head and my life were. And um, I had to like experience this, this, these physical sensations um, for that to happen. And I cried. I was so exhausted. Oh, so exhausted. Um, and tried to have, the, like, if you Google this, you're going to hear them say things like, um, you know, sit with the emotions, be present with the emotions, feel the physical sensations, have compassion um, for those for those feelings and experiences, uh, it, you know, which is, which is what I tried to do. But as I remember it now, <clears throat> as I remember it now, like it was, it felt like violent. And that was day one. A another experience I had that week was feeling inside my body, like feeling inside my legs and my legs just wanted to run away. Like they wanted to not be there. And it was like this super intense, like, rah, like feeling in my legs um, of just like they wanted to run, they wanted to move, uh, experience, run away, I'm sure, um, experience in my body. And a, a lot of my feelings um, are in my jaws, uh, the sides of my jaws. I noticed that, um, especially sadness, shame. Um, one feeling, oh, something else I did is kind of look up a feeling wheel or, you know, so it's a little deeper than just sadness and anger. And um, one of the words that kept popping up for me was inadequacy. And I consider myself a really confident person, I was really surprised that is what came up was inadequacy. Um, but I'm quite certain now that it was like inadequacy to fix all the things I cannot control. Right. So that inadequacy, inadequacy, I don't think, uh, was about, um, things I could control. It was about the many, many things that are out of our control as humans and out of my control as a human and out of my control as a parent and out of my control as a person. And just that feeling of inadequacy that I'm sure I have felt um, or that feeling has probably been in my body for a long time and I ignored it or I'll just try this, I'll just try this, right? Smart girl syndrome, ultimate smart girl syndrome still. Still, still, oh my gosh. Um, so uh, the, but that feeling of inadequacy, I was really strong. And one really important thing is when I was going into feeling my body, I was trying not to go back into my head. So here is what I was experiencing is that I would have a feeling and then my brain would want to start going into, okay, this is probably because of this, or maybe this is why, or yeah, this is, um, you know, your friend's fault, or this is your fault. How could you do this? Like whatever blame stories, whether they're blaming myself or blaming others, that is what like 
I did not want to do. Okay. That is not on the, how to feel your feelings list. Um, it's actually my way of avoiding feeling my feelings because if the pain, um, of the physical sensations were so uncomfortable, I can go back into my brain of blaming others, blaming myself, blaming the world, blaming God, blaming whatever. And then I'm focused on that rather than actually feeling the feelings or having the physical sensation. Okay. And that was tough, right? Um, okay, well, I'm probably sad because, and the, and the reason why, and oh, this is why, and it's like, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. That is not what I was there to do. I've done that work like a zillion times. Um, but it was easy to want to go into that uh, because it is more comfortable being in my head than it was being in my body. It was more comfortable being my head and, and than being in my body. Um, so it was really interesting. Uh, I am obsessed with intuition. I'm obsessed with, um, you know, a lot of the eating I do is intuitive, right? So uh, not feeling my body, not being present in my body has some real consequences, right? It, it, there's a disconnect from your intuition, a disconnect from your gut. Um, you eat your feelings because you can't really feel things. Uh, you know, um, you don't, you're not as present. Uh, you're, you have those emotions kind of lodged in your body at places that um, maybe you don't want them lodged in your body, right? So there's some real reasons I made this choice to feel my feelings. And it kind of felt like, like I said before, that my body had not caught up to where my head was. And there was still um, that fight and flight in my body, like a my body should have felt safer, should, you know, the should word. Um, but it, like my external circumstances were pretty safe, but my body didn't necessarily feel safe because I had not given my body the healing experience that I had given my brain. Okay. Because I'm a lot more comfortable in my brain. And yes, we're talking healthy food and water and exercise and sunshine. Yes, yes, yes. All those things too. But like for me specifically, it was like, I needed to have this experience to um, kind of get to my next level, right? I needed my body to catch up to where my brain was. And it was really difficult. <laughs> it was really, it was really painful. And I know exactly why people don't do it. Um, and I think a lot of people don't understand what that means. It's like, yeah, I know I'm sad. Yeah, I know I'm scared. Yeah, I can I can you know emotionally identify that I'm scared and say that. Um, but they don't take the experience to feel their feelings. I certainly didn't. This is like one of the last things I did. I just, you know, I'll say I didn't want to because it was bad. Um, but I think the biggest reason is I, I needed, I wanted my external circumstances to be safe enough to handle this internal journey because I cannot, it was so exhausting. Oh my God. I did it for a week. So exhausting. So exhausting every day for a week. So exhausting, so exhausting, so exhausting. Um, literally, that's all I did. Like, laid in the bed, tried to feel my feelings, then rested, then ate, and then, you know, again, and this is not a how-to. I, I, this is what I chose to do. Um, and I had done so much healing work and my external circumstances supported this, right? Um, I wasn't having this experience and, you know, in a situation where someone was going to come home and yell at me, or I wasn't in conflict with a family member, I wasn't dealing with a, another toxic situation. So for me personally, you know, I could kind of go all in. Um, 
but it was exhausting. And uh, yeah, be warned. It, it, you know, the it just felt emotionally violent to to really enter into your body again. And um, I'm not sad I did it, but I understand why so few people do. And I think it's a concept that's really misunderstood. So to sum it up, feeling your feelings means feeling the physical sensation within your body. Okay, like feeling tightness in your chest for um, fear, for example, and not moving away from that, you know, just allowing yourself to experience that tightness in your chest and allowing yourself to experience uh, that emotion and then having compassion for it and not going into, well, I probably feel this way because of this. And, you know, if my sister hadn't done this to me, then I wouldn't have felt this way. If my brother hadn't done that, right. Like not going into the story in your head, um, but just allowing yourself to physically feel the experience. So um, I definitely think it's a very misunderstood concept and probably something that a lot of people think they have done. Like if you just kind of like say, oh yeah, you felt your feelings. They're like, yeah, I've been sad and stuff. So yeah, I felt my feelings. Um, and so it's really about feeling the physical sensation in your body. Um, then having that experience, which is why I don't advise you to, you know, don't, don't, don't try this by yourself if you're not working with anyone or, you know, have someone, um, a trauma informed person that you are working with that can help you through this experience. Cause it was very intense and I've done an enormous amount of healing work and my life is very, 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 very safe right now. And it was still, or very, very safe when I did it. And, um, it's safe right now too, but you know, the, um, it was still a very, very, very difficult and intense experience. So uh, a worthwhile experience, I think, and um, hoping to have long lasting results from it and an even healthier nervous system and um, even less stress and more intuition with my body and more connection uh, with who I want to be and making great decisions and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it is it is a very intense experience. And uh, so tread carefully, get help. Um, don't try it alone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's so you can hear the grovel in my voice. It is early morning. Um, I, I really woke up thinking about you guys and thinking about uh, wanting to share this really intense experience and hopefully help you on your journey to an amazing life. And of course, becoming toxic person proof. Have a great day.